is doing this. We are finally going to make this happen. There was a lot of work to do, no doubt. I feel like that we made a conscious effort to really pull out all the stops. We need to make this record like a real record. And by that I just meant no compromising, no uh, cutting corners or settling for something, exploring every option. And I truly, to the bottom of my heart, feel like we did. started there, there's two moments in in my memory that I I recall when I think of starting this new album and this new project um, certainly one is the trip home from Nashville when we recorded retrospective we rather infamously recorded retrospective in two long days down in Nashville and right then and there it was we were impressed with the experience we were impressed with the sounds we'd achieved and we knew that that our band's goal was to you know, keep the momentum going. It was We have to record a full length. At that point, that would have been our second EP, and we wanted to do the tried and true album. We, that was kind of time for us to start thinking about cutting our full length to disc. I think the, the things that had kind of led up to that were one, we had just finished recording four songs. We knew that we were so far away from having a full length album done, but we kind of felt like at that point, the band was as good as we had been yet. And I, I think as we all kind of talked about it, we all knew how much potential there was still left. And so as we left Nashville, as we knew, even though we knew we couldn't be any further away from starting to record our first full length album, I knew that it was, it was next. And we did the songs in Nashville because this great opportunity arose with Kyle I feel like the retrospective EP was the first crop uh, that could have been the full length. Well, I think the biggest difference between this project and last was retrospective as good as that group of songs was and as good and as, as the recording and mixing and everything went. I felt like that was kind of I feel like we kind of just showed up, we did it, we recorded the parts, everybody was like, yeah, those are the parts, that's it. And everybody was happy. Oh, it's so loud. I love it. I love it a lot. Oh, it's too loud. Yeah, it's too loud. Yeah, it's too loud. Yeah, it's too loud. Sounds a lot yeah. coming out of the drums. I've got no complaints there at all. Very, very, very big, very solid for sure. Bass. Good. Dude, when you hit that low note with the cymbal, it sounds strong. Yeah, it's real good. But I felt like this record, I felt like we made it like what records should be made. Like we sat in a room together and got mad at each other. We sat and, you know, got excited together about parts. And then we took these songs and 
put microphones in front of, in front of the instruments and just did it and did it and did it until it felt right. I feel like the goal in this band was always to do a full length album. And when I hear Chris talk about it and Andrew talk about it and even Randall, the impression I get from them was that, yes, yeah, somewhere along the line in year three, after we did the first EP, we were going to start saving enough, saving enough money for the full length album. For me, that was always the goal. We knew we wanted to do it, but it wasn't as quantifiable until um, the last few months when when we'd begun to sort of accumulate the songs. That's when it, the, the second point in my mind, when it really changed from we'd like to do an album to we're doing an album, when the songs for that album really started coming together. You guys tell me, because it kind of, it goes, it would transition the way I usually play it, and then this. We do the bridge. There. Yeah. And then after that bridge, we do the bow down, down, down. We do it twice. a song, an idea for a song, it, it can be anything from a cool melody and I, maybe I work out a chorus and don't even have lyrics and I can bring that uh, to the group. Usually, um, because we can't always get together as often as we'd like, I will typically record a demo or I will just at the very least get my ideas down if I know I'm not going to see the guys for a few days or a week or two at a time and I will share that with them. I'll send them an email or something and say, hey guys, check this out. and. Uh, They've always been very good about giving me some feedback, saying, hey, I like this, this sounds cool, let's really hammer this, you know, try to dial this in when we get together next time. And that's part of it, ideas that kind of stem from me. Sometimes I've got a little bit, sometimes I've got a lot, but step one is always sharing it with the rest of the guys and getting some feedback and determining um, where we can take it and what we can turn it into. The, the challenge as a musician, I think, is always trying to... Uh accurately transfer what's in your head to your instrument. What I do is I typically come up with an idea and record it and send it out to the guys through an email. It's very raw. It's just me and my guitar. Uh, sometimes I may hum along a lyrical metal melody if that's what I hear to maybe give Chris some ideas on where to go. What I love about this group of guys in the songwriting process is that we'll take something that I had a very clear picture of what I wanted it to be in my head, but what I like is letting go when I introduce that to everybody. And I feel like when I do let go and we all get together and Chris says, what about this? Have you, have you thought about doing this? Andrew says, well, I kind of hear it doing this. Uh, and then the journey the song takes from there is is very exciting. I'd say when it comes to songwriting and uh, specifically writing lyrics, I draw inspiration from from really just events in my life or, or things that I can easily put myself in someone else's position, but it's 99% it's, it's of the time is some type of human to human relationships and how we get along, how we get up and we feel in the morning and how we think we're going to accomplish our goals by the end of the day. And I think that it's very introspective in the sense that it's easy for me to put myself in that position, particularly with where we stand now as the band. And a lot of the songwriting has been, how can we take the band to the next level? How can we 
we've, we've got some great things going. What can we do to, you know, to, to make our dreams become a reality? And a lot of the songwriting has been, it's been very, um, very relatable, very approachable, very front and center, easy to understand and easy to relate to. And I think that's just a reflection of how my frame of mind has been in the last three, four, five, six months as we've been writing the writing the songs for the album. It's just kind of a personal growth. It's a personal desire to go from where I am now to where I want to be tomorrow or next year. And I think that's what's cool is I think it's for the first time my writing lyrically has kind of spoken for the whole band. And I don't want to put words in their mouth, but in the past, the past two EPs we've done, it's just been kind of something I've come up with and the lyrics have kind of been an afterthought and or I should say an afterthought for the, perhaps the rest of the guys, not for me. But but along with the collaborative songwriting, I think that's a road I've gone down with the lyrics. Like invite the guys into the lyrics a little more so that the songs can be can speak for them just as much as they do for me. I think the reason that we felt so strongly about that was because we always felt like these songs were fairly relatable. One of the things that I love about listening to Chris's demos and listening to Chris's songs as they progress is that I always feel like there's at least one line in every song that, uh, that, that it takes me to another place. It, the, the way that Chris describes nostalgia, I guess is what I'm getting at, is what is so intriguing to me about the music. So many of the songs are about, you know, something in the past or trying to find something that you loved or that made you so happy again or, um, you know, the dreams of the future and, and what they what they hold for all of us. I think that overall it's it's been helped tremendously by Ferg, I think is the final piece of that songwriting uh, puzzle because Kyle has had a great vision when it comes to molding our songs into something bigger than we ever thought they could be. And as we've listened to a lot of, a lot of playback, I think that became evident immediately. The the reward that comes from having Kyle in those early songwriting sessions and have him sit down with us and share some ideas, I think that that has done wonders for the material. Stare at the frame, the photos only making it worse. A steady reminder of motion when I'm stuck in reverse. My hands are shaking, I can't even sleep anymore The paper floats like a feather till it reaches the floor Sometime in June or July Never imagined the waiting would be this hard The company line can only get you so far Till the lights will Dressing room four, aka the control room, affectionately also known as where the magic happens. <laughs> oh, he just went there, didn't he? This is where the producer with computers fixes all our shitty tracks. Absolutely. <laughs> this is where he keeps all the secrets in that thing. Here they come. Yellow bag of secrets. Secret one. Ooh. Oh my good lord. I don't even know what's in there. It's so secretive. Secret it's got a second eye. bag. These look like headphones, but they're not. This is called Central Station. This is actually mm -hmm. a radio that you can contact the future on to determine whether or not we're going to be successful. <laughs> yeah, can we just skip to it? I don't know why we're not just wearing these and <laughs> skipping this whole project. <laughs> it's kind of like a fruit tree. Mm-hmm. 
Radioactive fruit. Leans in for a better look. He's trying to diagnose the problem. There's something. There's something. There's fucking says. grease all over the shit. Sorry about that. <laughs> this actually does wonders sonically. Good <laughs> thing. Stepping on the, the vocals or something to be a little bit like the part that you're talking about, like the turnaround. Sounds awesome. Yeah, I guess that's what we'll do. The chorus. You go back to the you go back to the chorus matches up with that yeah, one of those two would work. So maybe you go, maybe you could go like two, one, two, two, or some like some sort of pattern like that. Do they? Just two, one, two, two. Okay. I kind of like that. It keeps it moving. Yeah. Because like you said, it kind of kind of lends to the vocal. Because the vocal is telling you right there right. with it. So Sorry, I'm the asshole for telling you the truth. I like that. If you never want to speak to me. So we just have to determine which part we're going to do for the turnaround. So do, 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 oh, do the dot eight. Yeah. yeah. Do, 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 do. Well, what do you guys think of maybe not doing those those right there? I, well, I was just I thinking the same thing. Not do those. <laughs> I agree. Okay. Well, right, we're we're gonna, we get there. <laughs> we get there eventually. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's, let's take a vote. Let's take a. <laughs> let's think of that out there because I was I went to such great lengths discussing Robert's part about holding back, not yeah, yeah, not right. not fouling that up with anything. No, 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 we'll take it out. And we're like, put <laughs> <laughs> some huge, great <laughs> candy like drums, <laughs> more drums instead of guitar. <laughs> Now we're talking. We do it two, two twice. Or just once. Twice. Right. So we can.
right here okay. to do. Okay. So tune in at two after twelve, December twenty ninth. December twenty ninth. We are uh, chugging through lead guitar stuff tonight. It's progressing nicely. We're getting some some good ideas and some face melting guitar rock songs. So, I'm pretty happy. Let's give me the tour here. We've got, uh, let's get one giant mic behind you. That guy. And there's two here. Silver guys. Is this a stereo situation, he said? Stereo situation. This is, this is for, uh, <clears throat> The more intricate, isolated guitar parts, the song that will be very acoustic, guitar driven, softer. You'd want every nuance of the acoustic, you would primarily focus on these two guys. I see. But a song like the one we're about to do, Brand New Start, which the acoustic guitar is merely one of several instruments of a louder song, he's probably going to go with this guy here, mostly, the black one. And then also, we've got a direct box. Yes, he's got. He's got the DI hooked up, utilizing the pickup in the in the guitar. So, so basically, Kyle could hear a mouse fart loud and clear from in this room. He could. Well, I think that's the deal. Mm -hmm. I think he could hear a mouse fart loud and clear. Hopefully, there are no mice running around in this room. Okay. I'm gonna check to make sure everything is okay. So, do not blow my face okay. off. All right. I, seriously. Well, I know. Put that Robert touch on it. Sure. I think you should do it one more time, and the notes that you know that you, that, that, like the ones where like you would normally walk up and I would tell you to walk down, that's what I want to hear here. I want to hear the fuck you Andrew notes. <laughs> and I'm not hearing those right now. You can do it one more time. I. If you're good, dude, don't do it for me. Do it for you. Are you doing this for Robert? This is for tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. some barroom brawl type stuff, uh, bottles breaking, that sort of thing. And Randall insisted on uh, dropping the bottle from 40 feet in the air, uh, <laughs> insisting that that was the height at which the bottle would break. Into our break, break tank. Ground zero right here. I said, Randall, no, 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 not a good idea. Let's just, you know, it'll surely break from down here, it'll be cool. Uh, but uh, his scientific mind insisted for uh, glass shatter pattern purposes. And uh, we couldn't have planned it any better. It hit the I beam. It's a shame we weren't recording. Un unbelievable. Made a large thud sound and then subsequently shatter on impact a good seven feet away from the drop zone, uh, away from. <laughs> Any chance of containing the mess whatsoever? <laughs> did, it, did it bounce off the steel beam? It hit the beam. Oh, beam. That was the first thing I was gonna say. I was like, just don't hit the beam. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. The next two are the keepers, though. No, oh, guys, I think you're gonna want this. <laughs>
on that note, let's do a take two. Robert, come over here and join me. Now, the successful one that won't be nearly Kyle, as Kyle, you ready? Fire in the hole! <laughs> it didn't break! It break! <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh my gosh. We're a bunch of idiots. Didn't break. We're, we are we botarded. We are entering, I believe, what it would be the equivalent of day six in the studio. What are we doing today? I'm doing bass tracks today. It's all you, man. Yeah, it's all me. Um, gosh, I laid my head on my pillow last night about 6.30. I saw that. It's uh, shortly afternoon or maybe coming up on one today. Uh, but nonetheless, I feel rested, so it's going to be a good day. It's good. It's what, a good day. How about a quick recap of yesterday? Uh, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with yesterday. Uh, I think Andrew's comment when I came through the door was, we are the epitome of disorganization. Very close. Uh, I think you came in and said, how is it? And I said, as usual, a model of efficiency. There you go. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. A little crazy, but then, uh, you know, Robert laid some nice stuff down. Some real nice stuff. Yes, he did. Uh, so, yeah, it was a good night. Very good night. Pretty magical stuff right there. It's incredible. All right, let's take a break. things I enjoy in life more than getting on stage and playing. The, the rush and the being in front of a crowd and playing our songs, it's just, it's, few things rival that feeling. Yeah, the, the funny thing about playing live is that when you get on stage, everybody feeds off, I, God, it's, you always talk about that energy. You know, oh, the room's got an energy. The room doesn't have shit. Um, people have energy. And when you walk into the Vogue and there's 250 people within 20 feet of you standing right up against the stage and you start pounding out songs and then, you know, once everybody kind of really hits their vibe, you're feeding off the crowd, the crowd's feeding off you. And though after those two things happen, then the three of us, or the four of us rather, start to feed off of each other. And we don't get that when you play to an empty room. When you play to an empty room, you know, it's tough and you're just kind of going through the motions and you, you play your heart out every time, make no mistake about it, but... When you play to people that want to see you, you play each note a little bit harder. You, you, the more the crowd gets into it, the more you want to return the favor. And I mean, you, you kind of you get to that moment on stage, and each member of the band, at one point or another, will all make eye contact, and you'll know once you get there. And, that, and everybody's just playing their heart out. And those those are the best gigs. Those are the good ones. When I get on stage, my objective is to connect. I think that's what we're all trying to do. We're trying to uh, create a mood 
and when you're able to connect with the audience and create this collective mood, if you will, it's, it's a really cool thing when you're able to achieve it. I, I, I think that's what we get up there for. And um, aside from that, it's cathartic in a sense that you're just pouring it all out there. Um, we've had the full spectrum. We've had some good nights and some bad nights, but very few nights that I wouldn't hop right back on the truck and do again. And that, that says something because I have the time of my life playing with these guys and I wouldn't trade it for anything, even if it means driving 400 miles to play for nobody and making 50 bucks and buying $100 in beer. I think it's, uh, we, we, we do this because we love doing it. I was a one-trick pony forced into early retirement Don't know where I was headed anyway I called it quits before the sky fell Taking one by one I found comfort in the clouds It was better than the alternative To what I'm living So last night, Randall um, kind of cornered us a little bit as we were getting ready to write some music and said, hey guys, listen, uh, I kind of need to walk away from the band. You know, we're kind of getting together for the first time today, Sans, our bassist, who has been with us since day one, and kind of trying to figure out where to go from here, and um, as, we, as we sit here today, we have four songs left to write and record before the album's done, and we have a number of number of shows coming up too so what was a challenge before um, when we had a basis is certainly no less of a challenge now um, the Randall's kind of decided to step step away at least in terms of a, a performance role so kind of going back to the drawing board we just have to start making some decisions and it's tough because Randall's been with us since the beginning and um, it's hard to imagine someone else stepping in I've viewed this as a family, and uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be it'll be a challenge filling those shoes. Uh, I look at us like a bunch of brothers. I don't want to get all cheesy, but uh, that's the truth. And I mean, that doesn't mean the end of the world for the band. It just means that it's it's a tough time for us now, and it's going to be a lot of adjusting and changes, and always easy. And that's something we're going through now. We're uh, Gonna make a few adjustments and find a good role for Randall that fits for him. And it's gonna be tough to look over and not see him on stage with us, but um, clearly I think he's making the right choice and, and reorganizing some priorities that's really important in his life and it's certainly important to us that, that he do those things. And, and uh, you know, I'm just gonna miss him. Uh, I remember calling around, looking for bassists, talking to <clears throat> some friends that are musicians, and trying to get some ideas uh, when Randall left the band. Um, and 
my roommate Damien suggested I give Sean a call. I said, what the hell, yeah, I'll give him a call. And so there, there, were, there was a handful of guys that I talked to, and from the get-go, Sean separated himself with his enthusiasm and his energy. I remember he came to Randall's last performance at Radio Radio. He said, yeah, man, I got all the songs from iTunes. I've been listening to them. Um, you know, I, I got my bass out of retirement. I've been, been working on all the tunes. I mean, this is before we made any kind of commitment with Sean. We were still uh, looking at other people and, and trying to figure out what direction to go and auditioning people. And I, I, that really made an impression on me. When I got the email, I just got excited about it. So I thought the first thing is let me start listening to music and see if it's something I'm even interested in. Uh, if it's even a, a genre that I like. And as I started listening to it, I liked it. And uh, we went back and forth on emails a few times. And I was starting to think that actually the uh, audition was actually never going to take place because it just kept going and going and going. And uh, finally we talked and uh, saw that the band had a, a gig at Radio Radio. So I thought, well, this would be a great opportunity to go and meet the guys first and foremost, but then also uh, have a chance to listen to what they sound like before I even, I myself make a commitment to even go audition. And uh, so when I came to Radio Radio, I got to meet all three of the guys and I uh, got to see a great performance. I was actually very, very impressed when I walked out of there that this is a band that I might have a shot to be a member of. And so it just made me even more excited to go home and to learn some songs. <laughs> I, I would be uh, I would be remiss if I didn't share the story about Sean getting on YouTube and looking at one of our clips of us joking around getting ready for a show and there was a quick shot. The camera glazed over Randall's pedal board. I think Sean went out and bought every pedal <laughs> on Randall's pedal board because he said something like, well, I just want to, I just want to replicate your sound, guys. I'll, I want to I wanna get the right sound. I want to get the Borrow Tomorrow sound. <laughs> We're like, oh, the Borrow Tomorrow sound? What? <laughs> okay. But that, that blew me away. You know, it was funny, but that's, that's the kind of investment that Sean has put into the band. And we couldn't be more pleased. How do you feel, um, we're not done yet, but this being kind of the home stretch, uh, you know, what's running through your head right now, being uh, the kind of the, the final lap, if you will? I, I don't want us to feel like we have to cut any corners, and I don't feel like that, I haven't felt like that, and I can only assume that given how much everybody's worked, how hard everyone's worked on this, that I think we're all willing to put in that extra effort here at the end, even if it may come with the 11th hour. I feel that we're still going to get the same treatment in these last three, four, five as we did on the first eight. And I've, I've never really doubted that. And I, if nothing has come up these past few days to leave me to believe anything otherwise. So mm -hmm. I think we're really mm -hmm. going to be happy with how the album, how, how we ground it out here last year. Yeah. One, two. I think so too. So here we are at the studio, famed Verizon Wireless Music Center, as I say, Noblesville, Indiana. My dog's taking a big poop. I wouldn't recommend taking that. Thank you, Gracie. Good girl. This is kind of a little studio tour. This is how we go about our business. So we come in, this is kind of like a catch-all room. This is catering. Right now it's just uh, home to a bunch of gear, uh, miscellaneous items. So then we kind of come into, uh, this is the dressing room hallway, so to speak, and this is kind of the corridor for awesome, as we like to refer to it. This is dressing room five. And the funny thing about this is that right now, it's the drum tracking room, so which is very easy to tell, I think. 
for those of you non-bowlers out there. And then what happens, this is also the room that we rehearse in, so right, whereas right now it's very bare, and there's only drums in here. Usually, usually the drums are back here, and Randall's over there, and Robert's over here, and Chris is over there, and we're all kind of just playing the big circle, and it's very cozy, and it's a lot of fun. So this is dressing room number four, there in sequence. Uh, this is the control room, the lounge, the office, the powerhouse, the nucleus, the uh, the brain, central nervous system, if you will, for anything else. Uh, the Mac, the, the saucy fullness room. <laughs> Therefore, it's full of saucy. Over here we have the lounge. Over here, this is where uh, you'll notice the <laughs> bed has not been made in the past couple days. I took a quick nap here the other night during one of our sessions. All right, so we come down the hall, and you can see all the various wires and things. Like, so I'm going to go outside, and when you close the door, it's kind of cold. So let's go outside, and then all these cables kind of run down to this room. And we're using dressing room number three. Excuse me. It's Ferg's home. He's been sleeping here since we started. So right now it's, uh, right now it's set up for scratch tracks. So you can see, like, there's a little snake. There's a couple snakes on the floor. And these are these are snakes. Snake! That's why we scream snake. And what happens is uh, we're setting up. Are we doing guitars next? Is that what we're doing? Guitars next. So Chris is setting up his guitar. He's got his guitar out. Um, kind of got everything blanketed so we can kind of control the sound a little bit better. Ferg runs a snake down here. We hook it all up. Every now and again, we'd like to take a small break, go get motivated. So we'll do things like step out here. Dirty. Now the amazing irony between the shot that you're seeing behind me right now and in comparison to um, us playing a show on any given night is that the, the scene in front of any club and what you see here can be very similar. <laughs> and that there's no one here. There it is. That's it, that's the studio. Photo studio, 2010, 2011. We think this is going to be a hit. We think this record is going to be really good. We worked really hard on it. As the lights go out, how could you let me down? As the glass is crouched down to the ground, helplessly turn away as the lights go So Chris, we literally just finished vocals for the very last track. How do you feel about yeah, it? I really did. It's kind I of a symbolic feel, moment here. Yeah, right. I feel, um, I don't know, it hasn't really sunk in yet. It's, we're done. Can you believe that? Wow. Pretty much. It feels like excitement and relief and... The overwhelming and, desire to start a brand new project immediately. I know. I can't wait to do this again in six months. It'll be amazing. After the world tour, we'll come back and we'll just set it up just like this. We're again. done! Yay! <laughs> we did it! Oh, good. We did it! Ah! When I first heard the news that Randall had died, I couldn't believe it. And in fact, to this day, several weeks later, I, I still can't. 
Randall devoted so much of his life and so much of his time to other people, uh, namely his, his wife Amanda, that he, he loved her dearly and he cared for her so much and the, the lengths to which he went to provide for her and for their family was just incredible. I, there are few people I've ever known that have been so incredibly supportive of others in their time of need as Randall was. On top of that, he managed to find time to be in a band with us. And that is something I'll forever be grateful. Randall was a founding member of this band. He was a part of the very fabric of our, our being and our existence. And it just feels like there's an incredible hole in our, in our family now. Just looking at some of the old videos with Randall and just uh, the character that he was. <laughs> um, you know, we'd be going on a long road trip up to Chicago and he'd say something that would just stop everybody in their tracks and we'd all just start laughing. Um, we had a lot of heart to hearts. We talked a lot about faith, about relationships. The guy just had a huge heart. Um, so damn sensitive and compassionate, warm. Um, you know, he loved Amanda dearly. And uh, just a tender hearted guy, a special guy. And, you know, hell, we missed him when he left the band. <sighs> you can imagine how much more we miss him now that he's gone. I can safely speak for all of us when I say that we were lucky to have Randall in our lives and to be able to share the stage with him, share the, the recording sessions, the songwriting sessions, the rehearsals, the car trips, just the, all of those band memories that I'll remember the rest of my life, Randall was a part of. And it's an absolute shame that he wasn't able to hear the finished product with the new album. But his fingerprint is all over it. And I know he's up there somewhere helping us see it through to the end. And I hope he knows we couldn't have done it without him. Where do we go from here? That's a good question. That's uh, kind of what the whole thing's about. Where do we go from here? That's 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 one of the biggest themes of the entire record. Is we don't know. Man, I wish I knew. I I can tell you where I want to go from here. I, I want to to continue making music. I want to keep. I've enjoyed the experience so much working. With, with Kyle, of course, but working with the, my bandmates and enjoying the, the growth of the material and the growth of our friendships over the course of these past few years. And I think we've kind of, we've hit the, the put up or shut up point to this project and this band. And 
And what the future holds, I don't, I don't know if we know exactly, but we want to keep going. I hope somebody sees this and realizes the uh, potential that this band has. Uh, I think the album's, a, like I said earlier, it's a true testament of, of what, this, what this band is, the sound uh, and the progress that this band just continuously makes from the first EPs all the way to this and what's going to just continue after this. If things fell into place the way I wanted them to, I would be ecstatic with uh, simply the opportunity to do this for a living. That is the goal. That, I think that's a realistic goal. It's hard to come by, but I feel like we're in a good position to achieve that. And that's it. That would be a dream come true, just to make a living playing music. And I'm not talking about big fancy tour buses or uh, you know, thousands of women and drugs and cocaine and, and uh, Rolls Royce and all that nonsense. I'm just talking about. Um, I'm just talking about making a living, playing music, paying the rent. You know, what are the goals? What are the ambitions? To share it. Um, to share it with people. To make people feel the way that we did when we wrote them or to make people feel something completely different. It's not about it's not about what we felt necessarily so much as it is what you feel and how the song relates to you or how the basement song reminds you of making out with your girlfriend in the backseat of your car or how a song like Born with a Broken Wing makes you think about your first breakup or how a song about Kurt, like curtain call makes you feel like riding a pony out in the sunset of the wild wild west. I don't know, but you know whatever, whatever it is, whatever that floats your boat. That's what we want. That's what we want people to experience. I, I'd absolutely love to do something like that. To be on our own, doing our thing, but being able to enjoy a passion that we all have, and that's music. A lot of that is up in the air. I think it's going to depend on. I don't know if I should say the success of the album, but at the very least, the the relevance, it, the album has to take us somewhere. It has to be the bridge to get us from point A to point B, and that's what we're hoping for. We've put everything we have in it, a lot of long nights, a lot of long hours, because we know that this could be our last shot. This could be, this could be it. You can like kind of look at real life, and you can kind of like look at life as the band, and um, you know I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where we go from here. Multi-platinum, hopefully. It's uh, a good question.